you know, I was, when I was putting out some of these, you know, that the shepherd knew that he lost his sheep, the woman knew she lost his coin, the father lost his son. I was going to say, the golfer knows when he lost, loses his ball, you know, you know, but he searches for it until he finds it. Especially these, these golf balls are expensive. I've been enlightened at how expensive they are, so Norman, you will certainly search in the rough until you find that ball. But sometimes when it's gone, it's gone. So I didn't want to use that as an illustration, but I thought I'd just throw it out there anyway and, you know, just to upset these golfers. That's why I don't play golf, because I'd probably lose balls all the time. Anyway, hallelujah. We're in the presence of God. I'm going to be reading from 1 Samuel tonight, and it's falling through um, from this morning. And uh, glory to God. Trusting that the Lord is going to do something in our midst. You know, we need to come to church now expecting, sure we should, you know, come and expecting that, that I'm going to be touched by the word of God. I'm going to be encouraged. The Lord could break in. There could be miracles here tonight. I think we need to lift the bar, lift our expectation. We've been sitting around for maybe too long and I'm, hey, and I'm one of them. But there's a hunger, there's a desire now to see again the glory of God. We're preaching for the glory of God. So we better start believing that the glory of God is able to come and fill our hearts, fill your heart, fill my heart, fill this place. Yeah. And we can see great days again. Glory yeah. to God. That's what we have to keep looking for. So I'm just going to read a few verses of scripture and then we'll just see how much I can get through. I've got, look, I've got points again. I better put this away. That was, that was this morning. Anybody wants to buy it or sell it? <laughs> All these other preachers do it, don't they? Kind of holy water and you know, all these claws, anointed claws. And then the reason how people will, will buy these things. When I was up at George Square, one of the times speaking, this woman came up to me, she says, You wouldn't have any holy water. I said, I don't do the holy water. I said, I do the holy most. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But she was persistent. Maybe my name, maybe threw her a little bit of Mali. <laughs> anyway, glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 30, we'll read a couple of verses, 1 to 8. And now it happened that David and his men came to Ziglag, and on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziglag and they attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire. And they had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great, but they did not kill anyone, but they carried them away, and they went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ion, the, Jezer, the, the Jezreelite is, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, and you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover to all. Glory to God. Quite a famous portion of scripture, but I think it's relevant tonight, where we're probably heading and just as the first point and um, I've only got six points tonight at 10 this morning so I must be I must be kind of weary slightly hallelujah the Amalekites and you know we see the Amalekites here and um, attacked the Amalekites were ancient enemies of God's people we read about them in Deuteronomy I'll just jump there and read a couple of verses in Deuteronomy but they were Israel's ancient enemies they hated Israel with a passion in 25, Deuteronomy 25, we'll just read a couple of verses. You don't have to turn there, but you can note them and you can read them later. And a couple of verses, verse 17, it says, Remember what Amalek did to you on the way you were coming out of Egypt, how they met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks, all the stragglers at your rear, when you were tired and weary, and he did not fear God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around in the land that the Lord your God has given to you as a possession that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. You shall not forget. And we can read again that shortly after that there was a great battle in Exodus. We read about that again, that, uh, Joshua taking on the Am Amalekites. And we'll just read a couple of verses here in Exodus 17 just to highlight the need for these 
and people. Now it says in verse 8, Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men to go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up onto the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amal Am 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 Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became weary. So they took a stone, put it under him, and he sat in it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly block out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. And so we can see here Amalek, if you like, was the great enemies of God's people Israel. And can I also say to us here tonight that we also have enemies, that Am Amalekites are still about spiritual Amalekites. We would probably call them, as I said, Satan hates us. And uh, we would call them fallen angels and demons mm -hmm. who are hell-bent on our destruction, as the Amalekites were hell-bent on the destruction of Israel. To stop them, get into the promised land. And the devil will always seek to stop us from going to our promised land. He's got his dominions, he's got his armies. They're very real today. I want to tell you this, there's a lot of people who sold their souls to the devil. And he has got his living armies. Yes, in the spiritual realm, fallen angels, demonic power, but also on this earth, there's many demonic pe people controlled by demonic spirits who are helping on our destruction. Someone said to us many years ago that there was a witches coming in this area who were actively praying against this church, coming against us. Do you know that these occultists and city satanists fast and pray? Pray that God will break marriages. Pray that God will cause the pastor to fall and inflict them with disease and all of these things. Do you know that they also are very active in prayers and coming against the people of God, putting hexes around the place and all of these things? We might laugh at these things. I want to tell you this, there is power in the demonic. Yeah. But I want to tell you this, our God is far greater than the demonic. Yeah. And he has given us all power over the fallen one and his dominions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John 10, 10 says this, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that may have life and have it to the full. Remember this, the devil is a liar, he's a thief, and he's a murderer. Mm -hmm. And he, he hates us with a passion. And he's out to try and rob us at any given time yeah. to come against us. Glory to God. We have to realize we have an enemy. Yeah. And unless you don't recognize, you know how much now that many people in the church don't even believe in, in, in a fallen angel called Lucifer. They don't believe in a lost eternity called hell. Do you know that many areas within church denominations now actually put out that idea? They think it's just God's just using these little kind of allergies to scare us to behave. You know, you better behave. You remember you said that. You better behave yourself, big bad father. You better watch yourself. You know, my mother used to say, "You better behave careful your father will be because we just ran rings around about her, but you know, the word father sometimes, you know, that you know, that was the days when you could get a great skate and you got a real belt, <laughs> to be truthful. And um, so there was a bit of fear there um, for the old man. Amen. Glory to God. So we can see this here as well. We can see just at the very beginning there that, that these ancient enemies of God's people attacked the people of God. Amen. I've got down here, Ziglag was unguarded and it was vulnerable. <clears throat> And many times in our life, maybe our guard is down. That's when the enemy will come against us. Well, maybe just we've not got our guards up. That we're vulnerable. We're in a, a place where, you know, we're not quite at the races. You know, we're just maybe going through a difficult time. Or, you know, we're just maybe just not fully awake. We're, we're drained. We're weary. This is what it says about the children of Israel. They were drained and they were weary in their long journey coming out of Egypt. They were, they were stressed, you know, and they were weary. And that's when the enemy came against them. They started to attack them, attack their flanks, as we see here. A couple of scriptures that would just emphasize that it says 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may deliver. I think the NIV says, Prowls around. Lions are not as big and tough as you think they are. Usually they're hiding in the long grass, aren't they? And they're always scanning out, they're always looking for the weak one rather than going for the strong one. And I want to tell you this, that's how the devil works. He looks and he sees who's struggling, who's maybe out of fellowship a wee bit. It's a little bit you take the coal out of the fire. We know that it begins to 
glow and the flame dies. It's not in the middle of the fire. And that's the enemy. He will, he will, he will, he will chase the pack and then he'll try and isolate you and scare you off and get you out on your own. Then he'll move in for the kill. This is how the enemy works. We can see it in nature. We can see it in many places here. We have got a real enemy who's out to attack us and to keep us from our promised land, Lord, to God. That's why Ephesians 6 and 10 finally says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Lord to God. Thank God we don't need to be strong in our own power. I can say we're all. I don't know about you, but I mean, I'm, I'm pathetic. I mean, we are having a full day. Thank God I don't have to rely on myself. Thank God that God hasn't left us to our own devices. Unless, of course, you're a, shall, I don't know, an Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. I mean, an incredible Hulk. Yeah. But we all need the Lord. This is a spiritual dynamic, and we cannot fight the enemy in our own strength. But thank God we don't fight the enemy in our own strength. We fight the enemy in his strength. Glory to God. And demons flee at the presence of God. So we can stand in his strength. Glory to God. When the enemy comes against us, we stand in his strength. And it's not us that he runs away from because when he, when he comes against us, he, it's the Lord that stands with us. Yeah. And he will quickly retreat. Glory to God. So we can see this. And also what's it saying is put on the full armour of God. Why does Ephesians 10 go through there for the next couple of verses tell us to put on the full armour of God without mentioning it? It doesn't say put on some of the armour of God. It says put on the full armour of God that you might take your stand against the evil one. We have get an evil power to come against us. But let us remind ourselves of the one who is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Glory to God. He shuts, shuts the mouths of the lions and he rebukes Satan. Satan, get behind me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty, powerful God, but it's good for us to take notice. So we see that Ziglag was unguarded and it was vulnerable. Guys, we need to be very, today more than ever, I think we need to make sure that we are get the hammer of God on. We need to be first vigilant today. I believe the days are getting darker. The enemy, there's a, there seems to be an increase in power of demonic activity at this moment in time. And we need to be sound and strong in the Lord, girded with the armor of God. And we need to be alert. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus says, it says, well, that, you know, any man that falls asleep in your house will get broken into if you knew the thief was coming to break into your house, guess what, man, you're up there with a club behind the door. <laughs> you've, got, no, you've got the big dog sitting there, primed and ready, waiting. Anybody come through this door, the dogs are on them. Hallelujah. Unless, of course, it's a chihuahua or something like that. What's it, what is it? The Edith's dog is a, a dashing. I will tell you to bite ferocious, but I'll take her word for that, you know what I mean? If, if you're staring down a big Doberman or something, you'll think twice if you come through that door. Glory to God. So we'd be on our guard. We wouldn't just be negligent and, and sit and just allow it. We'd be aware. We need to be alert. We need to be a people who are alert today. Glory to God. And he's told us to be alert. So we don't want to be unguarded. We don't want to be vulnerable. But there's times and seasons where life we do feel vulnerable and we're not completely where we should be. And that's when the enemy will come, isn't it? That's generally when we get attacked, when we're just not feeling quite ourselves. So we need to be encouraged and keep around. Surround ourselves with brothers and sisters. Glory to God. Let's not be alone. We need each other. Yes. Amen. I'm so blessed to see all you see guys here tonight. Honestly, encouraged and blessed. Fraser, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Fraser. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but then when they come to the camp, what do we see here? They took everything and destroyed the camp with fire. Everything was gone. And when David came back to the camp with these mighty men, Everything was going to place. They seen the, they probably seen the smoke in the distance, and they would, you know, like these cowboy films. Remember the Indians would be raided? Do you remember the old films? And you see the smoke rising. The cavalry arrived, but it's too late. They've been there. They've caused mayhem. And David and his men must have quickly descended on it, and there everything is burnt, fire. Every, everything is gone. And their worst nightmare would have thought they've killed them all. Or they've never seen their loved ones again. It's like it's gone. There's no hope. And it says here that they're, they're confronted with this. Everything has been destroyed. His men, they were totally defeated within themselves. They're broken when they witnessed the carnage and the loss of their families. Traumatized. You know, in three periods in your life that you've been traumatized. When all hell seems to have broke loose and all devastations come against you, and you just feel as if you've been robbed of everything. Yeah, I've been there a few times in my walk with the Lord. London, haven't we? We've been there. Just seem to, everything just seemed to go into the wall, and it's like, and it leaves you traumatized. It leaves you. You're devastated. Mm. I've shed a few tears. 
Thank God we can shed tears. There's nothing wrong in that. There's the mighty men all crying their eyes out. Since they cried that much, they couldn't cry anymore. Not quite been there. You have, but not. <laughs> Sorry. Listen to your reference. Women are better criers than men, isn't it? You know, so. But you do get a few crybabies as men as well. I don't want to be un totally unkind. But there's nothing wrong with this crying. In fact, we men, we need to cry more. Yeah. You know? But it's, it's good for us to cry. You know, and just to be uh, just to release that, you know, frustration and the hurt within us. Sometimes we bottle it up. Sometimes it's good to, you know, you, I'm sure these women will recognise this. You feel much better once you've had a good cry. Is <laughs> 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 there something about that? Isn't it? Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> so this how God is kind of put us together. <laughs> Glory to God. But glory to God, we can, you know, sometimes you know, life can hit us so hard, you know, and it, it reduces us to tears. I'm not belittling this guy. Sometimes, you know, we can just be in the midst. Of, everything seems to have been taken from you, you know, everything you maybe worked for, or everything you've really worked hard to achieve. Sometimes you can just be gone in an instant. That's how sometimes it happens. There was just a vulnerable moment, there was a window of opportunity, the enemy took it, it was unguarded and crashed in there like marauders. Not only did they take everything, but they burned everything. There was just nothing left. It was just cinders. And these men are broken men, totally and utterly traumatized. The next thing we see here, though, David is now deeply distressed. Now, David is crying his eyes out as well. David has lost everything too. He's lost his wives. But it says, though, there very clearly, it says, now they are looking to stone him. <laughs> so not only is he, he's crying out, but now they're looking to stone David. Amen? Why were they going to stone David? Because it was David who was the leader. David had made the decision. We need to be behind the scenes. David said, right men, we're going to go and we're going to join ourselves to the army of the Philistines because there were going to be a big battle with Saul and their men. And David must have made that decision. And David marched off all the men and left the place vulnerable. But David failed to do that. Now they were looking for a fault, guys. Your fault. You told us we should never have left the camp. We left it vulnerable. David, it's all your fault. And to an extent it probably was. David had to make that call. It's always going to be a fall guy. Mm. You know, I could, I, as, as a pastor of the church, I could maybe make some crazy decision and everything could go pear-shaped. Well, I've got to take it to chin. Who was at the top of the deck? He's the man that's going to be, he's the fall man. He's the man that's made the mistake. I've seen some churches made some horrific mistakes. I remember the church, there was a church of Scotland up in the Highlands, I won't mention it, but that was a time when churches invested their money. That was that time when you made it, you know, you'd rather than leaving your money in the bank, you could invest it in the stocks and shares. Well, this particular church stuck a huge amount of money on the stocks and shares, and that was the time, remember everything crashed? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Boof! Everything was gone. Kitchen sink. Bad decision by the leadership, but it was, it was done with a good intention. But there we go. Devastation. So we can all make terrible mistakes, and there was David. Everything's gone now, and the men are ready for stoning him. That's a serious business. But I love this verse when we read the verse. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Amen. David found strength in his God. In the time of greatest disaster and tragedy, it says, David strengthened himself and found strength in God. David sought the Lord and got before the Lord, and he found new strength. Isn't it amazing sometimes that we can come before God in the midst of a disaster and we can find strength in God when you've really just been at breaking point? Maybe you have been through the breaking point, but we can find our God and we can find strength in the Lord and He will strengthen us. Hallelujah. And we usually that will come at a time of brokenness. Glory to God. It takes brokenness sometimes to get us before the Lord. And I tried to bring that out this morning as well. Some God, sometimes God will allow difficulties to come into us because it will cause us to pray better. You know, sometimes I know we can all go through our prayer times, but I tell you this, when all the hell breaks loose in your life, I want to tell you this, your voice is louder. Your intensity is stronger, mm -hmm. you know? You're in the middle of a disaster now, I want to tell you this, that it causes you to pray more. He does. It causes you to really cry out to the living God. And then you wonder, well, why did all that happen? Because God is doing a work in us, and God will allow things to come against us. Glory to God. He will allow things. But he says, but don't worry, I won't let you go through too much that you will crumble under it. I'll give you the strength to bear up in it. Hallelujah. I don't think it was fun for Daniel when he found himself in a den of lions. You ever seen a lion? Fierce things. 
I remember once I was in Africa, we went to and rolling plates, and we weren't out in the sticks, we were in one of these, I mean, I went to Africa and I was in a safari park, you know what I mean? Oh, I could do that here in Glasgow. Anyway, that was the closest I got, we were out in the sticks and all these weird and wonderful places, I don't even get a sniff of this big safari. It was always in wee tents and out in the, you know, anyway, villages, and this time we were walking around and we were walking by this big fenced area and there was these lions sitting up at the top, you know, just oblivious to the fact that we were standing there looking at them, I mean, they're letting you know, miserable little things. But anyway, there was this wee um, Staffordshire Terrier that the, the man who owned the safari had. Anyway, this wee Staffordshire Terrier just wanders up, you know, beside us. Oh, in the seat, man. All of a sudden, these lions came alive. <laughs> and two of them came screaming down towards the fence and they just jumped up and banged the fence, the whole fence shook, and I'm standing there listening to people. And it's like, the wee dog now had got their attention. And I'm just standing there, I'm terrified, I'm literally, I'm terrified. And we're all standing there, even Big Ben Patu, and we're all, we're all kind of standing there, like, trying to kick the, kick the dog, trying to kick the dog, and I went, let's go and we'll look at some of the birds now. <laughs> but I want to tell you this thing, so, listen, when you're in a bad place, I want to tell you this, you want to get out of it, but glory to God. Lions are facing some things, but sometimes God will put us in situations where we will cry out to him. Hallelujah. So David found his strength in the Lord. Listen, it's very easy to find your strength in other things. I'll be down here. Find solace in the wrong vices. Comfort eating. Well, that's one we all suffer from. You ever get that when you're feeling down? You just go, oh, give me a friction. Before you know it, you can just go through weeks and months of comfort eating. It comforts us, doesn't it? So we just overly stuck ourselves. Well, I've, I've done it from time to time. You see, Linda, going like, yeah, yeah, it's not so, you know. Or else you can turn to other vices. You can turn to drugs, alcohol. You can turn to other things to want to bring a bit of solace to. It's the wrong vices. Rather than turning to God, and you can just turn to we are watching hours and hours of telly. Or you can be finding yourself sleeping far too long. There's lots of things that can, can grab a hold of us that we don't look, we should always look to the Lord. That's where we'll find our strength. These other vices, my friend, will certainly not. And so we can see that David now strengthens himself in the Lord and he calls for Abitha, the, the priest, who is the ephod. Now the ephod was a breastplate that they had and he was going to consult with God. Now the reason he called for the ephod, that's when you had the urium and the thummim, if I'm pronouncing that properly. Now don't ask me what these things did, but part of the priesthood was that the urium and the thummim, whenever you wanted to consult with the Lord, there was these things in the breastplate that they used to ask God questions. And so this is why we see that with David. He calls Abathur the priest. And now he's going to seek the face of God. And he's going to ask God the relevant questions as we heard there. I've got down here, you know, it's very important to consult God before you go charging headlong or head first into a difficult situation. Sometimes you get that gung you know, you get that wee burst of energy. And, you know, you decide, you just, you go charging off really without consulting the Lord. You ever did that? You open your mouth at the wrong time because you're just going to jump in there. Uh, are, are you jumping in a situation, you know, you've jumped in it without consulting the Lord, you've just went in feet first, and generally, you know, you usually come out and not too good, I might add there as well. But just to give you a wee flavour of that, Urim and Thummim 23, 1 Samuel 23, we just read a lot about it from 1 to 5. David is in another situation there, and it says, Then David said in 1 Samuel 23, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah. And they were robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and save Keilah. But David's men said to him, Look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more will we go against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord again and says, And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. So then for David always sought the Lord before he went charging off any place. Listen, there's good advice in this. Always slow down first and seek the Lord before we go charging into a situation. When we run into serious trouble, we should seek the face of God first and foremost and don't rely on our strength. So David again, we see here now, he asked the Abathur, the priest, to come. I did not like that, uh, Anyway, he asked him to come and he says, now we're going to seek the Lord and he asked God's questions. Now, I don't know what they actually did or they threw out there. It was like, David asked the question in the affirmative. It was maybe just a little bit like, the short straw, long straw, you know, Lord, should I go and do this? And yes, 
for whatever way it was, it was a simple illustration, but it was something like that where God communicated. You asked the question, the relevant question, and you said, Lord, what am I going to do in this? Do I go, will I go after it or will I not stay? So David wanted to find out, will I go after the Amalekites? And the Lord says, yes, go. And then he asks him another question, you know, will I, you know, will I retrieve, will I retrieve my wife and and family and the Lord says the affirmative yes go you will retrieve everything glory to God mm -hmm. David sought the Lord and it's very important for us also to seek the Lord can you imagine now the confidence that David has the men are ready for stoning him it's a very difficult situation but David has said to the Lord right guys get in your horses we're going after our the Amalekites and they're going to retrieve everything. Could you imagine that? Now he's the man everybody's looking to. I've heard from God. We're going after them. God has given us a victory. We will retrieve everything. As far as you're concerned, the wife's not allowed to be dead. And we see David now is marching and leading his men uh, along the way into this battle. I just love the way that the God will add, will, will speak to us with the Urim and the Summit coming. Sometimes I think we should still have that Urim and Thummim. Would you not? When sometimes when you're seeking the Lord, it's not quite as simple as that, isn't it? You've got a decision to make and say, Lord, what do, you, what do I do? Do I do this or do I not do that? Or, you know, and how, how do you know? Glory to God. When we've got a big decision to make. There's like Nigel and Debbie and Alex are up there in Island of Lewis now, in case you wondered where they were. They felt God leading them when they're up to the Island of Lewis. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And um, so they'll keep in touch with us. But they felt God leading them to the island of Lewis. Now that's a big decision to make, isn't it? If you've ever been in the island of Lewis in the winter, that's a big decision to make. To go and stay there and to sell sticks. So they've rented an accommodation and they felt the leading of the Lord that God was leading them to the island of Lewis. So we need to pray for them that all goes well with them. But as I get said this morning, what if you felt God was leading you to China? Well, that's something you really need to seek the Lord on. You wouldn't just make that decision on a whim, would you? You would really have to know that you know that you know. I mean, I always say this when I was here. If I felt God telling me to leave here and go to Timbuktu, I would go. But I really need to know that I know that I know that God was sending me to Timbuktu. Now, God speaks in many ways to us, his people. We've all got the Spirit of God. And God can speak to us. I think it was the Moravians and Norman, you will correct me this. The Moravians actually were actually used powerfully to lead John Wesley to the Lord. A very godly bunch of people. But I'm sure it was them. They used to have a tradition where they would just open up the Bible and put their finger on a verse and believe God would use that word to speak to them. So whenever I'm like in a, a situation, I'm sure it was them. I couldn't, I was trying to find that, but it was something like, you know, like open up the Bible and go, right. And then you read. And hopefully something in the scriptures would indicate that the Lord would answer to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Now I know that God can do that. I mean, I've, I've done that once and I've really struggled once. I opened up my Bible. You know, did that? You're <gasps> and something jumps out at you. I mean, I mean, God can do that. You know, maybe you're seeking a word for a word or something. You just open up your Bible and get, you just look at something and it just seems to just hits the nail on the head. Do you ever get those moments and something will do that? But let me tell you this, that's not something you could rely on. So maybe God done that one to you once. Now after that, you're right, okay, God, speak to me. <laughs> It wouldn't work that way. God can speak to us in many different ways and God will choose to. You can never get yourself stuck in a bubble there and believe that God would choose to speak to you that way. God has many ways and you can never be rich in any of them. You can even use a donkey to speak to you. Hallelujah. And nobody better to say he's, oh, he's using a donkey today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We see these things. God has got a way of speaking to us and we need to open ourselves up to that. Father, what are you saying to us tonight? So anyway, David's men now go charging across and they start to pursue the enemy. Hallelujah. And it says they found them all celebrating and, they, and, and there they were. And it says David's men, and there was only 400, there was only 400, there was 600 set out, but 200 were too tired to carry on. And 400 went and they slaughtered the enemy all day long and then they retrieved everything and they returned victorious with everything intact. Because God had restored that which was stolen. Amen. God had restored that which was stolen. But David made sure everybody got their share. David made sure that everybody got their share. There's a principle in this. A couple of the men, 200 men that stayed behind were too tired. And David says they will share 
in the bounty, just as other men did as well, because they were too tired. And David made that a rule from there on. Everybody was going to be sharing in the blessing of God. Glory to God. Everybody was to share in the blessing of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've got down here, God so chooses to favour this church with his glory. Hopefully every single person is going to be blessed that are here. Everybody is going to get their fair share of the blessing of the heaven of, of God. And even people who come in here off the streets, guess what? They're going to be touched by the glory of God as well. Because when God blesses you, it's for, a, it's for other people to be blessed as well. Isn't it interesting when David then, when the, now David's a hero, one minute they're going to stone him, and the next minute David now is a hero. Oh, David, David's wonderful. And they got all that booty out in front of him and said, this is David's share. I want to tell you this, isn't it? People are very precarious. One minute, they're ready to stone you, and the next minute, they're ready to lift you up and hail you as a great leader, isn't it? Did Jesus not go through the exact same thing? There was times when he wanted to lift them up and pray them into Jerusalem as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're so you know. And it says other times they picked up stones and they were going to stone him. That's why Jesus never entrusted himself to any man. He always entrusted himself to God. But God is using, we can draw from this illustration here, that the Lord is speaking to us also, his people. Glory to God. God wants to restore to us, I believe, today. And that was what's coming through this morning. For all of us, have sometimes been ravaged by this life. All of us sometimes, you ever get fed up, you just feel as if you're just, you've been losing, losing, as if the enemy just seems to have the upper hand for far too long. And it's as if we just feel as if there's just been a cloud, a dark cloud. You ever get those wee pictures and remember there was a wee boy walking along the road, there's a wee cloud above him raining on him continuously. And then it's like, you know, where's the sunshine? There's been periods in my life, I want to tell you, there's long periods in my life where I just felt as if I was getting robbed continuously. When I was in business, just everything went wrong. I just, I, I just felt it wasn't just a week or a bad week or a bad month. I mean a bad year. I'm saying, God, where are you? It's like, what's happening? It's just like everything seemed to get, be going wrong in my life. And then you, you start searching your life, you start not feeling good about yourself. What must I be doing wrong? I thought the debt collectors coming to our door. And it was that flat and red through. We just seem to lose everything, the flat, we tried to sell our flat before that, everything went wrong, we ended up having to be homeless, and Linda was staying with somebody else with the kids, and then we ended up getting this flat and ran through, and then when we moved in the air because you get bad debt, bad credit, I remember one time we had two people in the house staying with us, they were ministering in the church, out the blue, the door went, and it was a debt collector turned up at the door. Humiliation. I was humiliated. Even more so when he came in, he looked around and went, oh, there's nothing, nothing worth, there's nothing worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this house, taking well, against the dead, that was more humiliating than it was, not it? Mm-hmm. So I know what that's like, I know what it's, it can be, and you just think, what, look, why is all this going wrong in my life? Mm-hmm. My children are not in church. Do you think that doesn't affect me? Mm-hmm. Do you think, do you know something? I phoned my daughter today, Kathleen. Scott's been getting to know her a little bit, doing some work down there in the house, trying to kind of help her. Thank God for that. And I've got a wee picture on my wall in this wee talk. There she is, in a wee party dress at that wedding. She's only been there on four or something like that. I remember picking her up. And I remember I had to carry her out the bars because she was, you know, you take, her, you take them to the bars swimming. Katie loved the pool. She every time, she'd be in there for hours, I'm going wrinkly. I remember it's time up. And she'd be steaming the place down. You'd be taking it out of here. Just another 10 minutes, you know. And I'm looking at her, and I just there. I, I sat there, and I phoned her. She was in Larks with her partner, and I just said, "You know something, Katie? That's why you know, you know, I'm praying for you because I know you're a dad." I says, "No, I want you to know, I am praying for you." I says, "Kathleen, I says, I'm concerned. I didn't even, I says, I am concerned for you. I'm concerned for you because you're not living your best life. And this isn't a Joel Osteen, your best life now message." <laughs> I just, I know that she's not, certainly, she's not living her best life by, by far. And until that extent, I feel as if as a father, I just, do you ever feel as if you failed your kids? Do you ever feel as if you could have did better? Did I not say this morning, did I not beat myself up? Did I not, you know, and, and you see other families and their children, they're all in the ministry and they're all doing great. And I look at mine, not that they're not doing great, but does it not affect you not? Your heart breaks for them because they're out there, they're out there. 
And I just says, I'm going to, I says, I says, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be calling upon God for you. Because I go through seasons. I remember once we wondered one time, I says, I just felt in the spirit that my daughter's been kidnapped. Which is probably relevant to these verses. I felt in my spirit, my daughter has been kidnapped. See, if my daughter had been kidnapped physically, mm. you know what I'm saying, Jim? You would be up in arms. Mm. You'd be out there looking mm -hmm. under every bush. You would be like, I'm not quite, um, what's that from? <coughs> Taken. Thank you. <laughs> Liam Neeson, I. I mean, I'm not quite saying we're going to charge, but do you know what I'm saying? But you would not be at peace. You would, be, you would not be at peace until you found them or you found out what went wrong. You could not be at peace. Can I tell you just now, as the devil came and he's robbed us, he's, he, he's a thief and he's a liar and he's a murderer. Mm -hmm. And he's come and he's robbed us at times. Maybe robbed us of our finances, robbed us of the call of God upon our lives, robbed us of a blessing that God wanted to have in our lives. He's robbed us of our debt, robbed us of our destiny. Maybe some of us had a destiny in here and you just feel as if, you know, it's just like, as if it's just been stripped away from us. Mm. Do you know something? Our destiny is in Christ and the chest and the men in Christ. Now the devil would just stand and say, oh, it's done, it's gone, it's lost, forget about it. I just feel as if in the Lord tonight, I just feel as if I'm saying, no, it's not done and dusted, it's not over until I say it's over. Mm -hmm. And everything is redeemable. Glory to God. Do you know our scripture's just coming to me just now? Norman and Bob and you spiritual ones out there, Fraser. It says, when the Babylonians took the precious possessions of the temple to Babylon, all the all the, the, the utensils, all the holy things, God says, I'll just let you keep them until, until I call for them to bring them back again under the ministry of Cyrus, who then gave them all the precious things. God says, I'll just let you just keep them for a little bit. He says, but they're coming to the I will call for them to be brought back to Jerusalem. That just came, that's not part of my notes, that just came to me the other now. He said, I'll let you hang on to it for a wee bit. He said, but then I will bring them back again. Because I've got, you know, you're only being, I'm only just letting you hang on to them for a little bit. Do you remember when God allowed the ark to be taken by the Philistines? In the early chapters of Samuel? God allowed it to happen. But they couldn't hang on to it. It was too hot to hold on to. And they sent it back with a blessing. Do you know something, I just feel in, in tonight's God, because I, I, I suppose all of us can look at things in our lives and just say, do you know something, you ever feel as if it's just like, I just feel as if I've been robbed, you know what I'm saying, Gene? Just feel sometimes, you know, and it can sometimes you just feel powerless. Is it just me? And then you just accept the fact, okay, it's, it's, it's happened, it's gone, and then we lose that impetus to say, I need to get that back. <clears throat> That's mine. That is mine, and I need to get it back. I just feel something stunning up. In my heart to say, do you know something? We need to start getting a bit angry and militant mm. in the spirit, I might add. Yes. Mm. And I just feel as if the Lord is just quickening us up again to say, do you know something? We need to rise up and be the people of God that he's called us to be. Mm. He is on the throne. Glory to God. And we are the people of God. Yeah, sometimes the Lord will let the enemy come and to attack us and, and, and you're like, rob us. But there's going to come a day when God says, okay, it's time now. Mm. Give it back. Hallelujah. And we, I mean, the locusts will come. But he says, I will restore the years that the locusts have robbed from us. Amen. 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 I will restore the years of the locusts and the canker worms that's robbed from my people. There comes a time when, when all hell seems to break loose. And God says, don't worry about it, I'm in charge. Mm. And we just don't, we don't like those moments, do we? But there'll come another time when God all of a sudden turns back to us and just says, okay, now. I'm going to restore, restore a ministry, restore your anointing, restore your joy, restore your peace, restore your first love. Can we all say that we've got that same first love that we once had from the Lord? You know, sometimes you don't always necessarily know your first love cooling down, isn't it? Sometimes it's a gradual thing, and, and then you get to a point where you're kind of the tooth, you've been around the, you know, you've been in the church for a long time. And you just don't realise that you have that fervency that you once had, that, 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 you know, fire that's now just went, thank you, Janice. Reception for that word there. Then my fire's not burning bright, it's what it was. 
because life has taken its toll on me. I've been battered, I've been bruised, but glory to God. Mm. But I want to tell you this, God is going to be restoring to his church. Or for those who are crying out for him. Those who are saying, oh Lord, I know, I know that, you know, Lord, there was a promise made to me. Yeah. I have been in that wilderness for far too long. I believe God is bringing us out of this place of wilderness and he's bringing us into the promised land. And we need to say, Lord, remember your promises to me? Do you remember that, which I felt that God had done in my heart or something else? I'm like, we can start to say, God, Father, please restore to us. Mm. Restore to us. Restore to us. And I just feel tonight, and that's why I wanted to put that out there this morning, but tonight I want to say this. You know, the stuff that maybe has been lost to us, to you, and it's relevant to you, and the stuff that's been lost to me, let us disappear without actually being able to put on a little track. Do we need a track? Do we need a bit of music to, to stir up the... This is not an emotional kick here tonight. I really feel tonight, just in the realm of the Spirit of God, that there's something in you, you know you've lost something. There's something that you know deep within your, your heart and your soul. You just know that, you know, I just, I've maybe missed something and I've, I've just accepted the fact that it's gone. I just believe the Lord will say to us tonight, it's, it's not gone. It's waiting for you to retrieve it. Hallelujah. It's waiting for you to find it again. Mm. Amen. It's like the buried treasure, isn't it? But you need to know what it is. Whatever it is, it's maybe just been robbed. And life can rob it. But God is far greater than life circumstances. He wants to restore to us. Hallelujah. He wants to give us back with interest. David came out with interest. Not only did he retrieve back which was his, but he came back out with a mighty bounty. Glory to God. And what's the first thing that David did? He started sharing that around, didn't he? He went to all the people he was in communion with and he sent them, here, here's a blessing for the plunder of the Amalekites that have probably been plundering you for years. And David shared that about. Listen, God wants to bless us that we can be a blessing. Mm. Amen. That's what he does. He wants to bless you so that you will be a blessing to other people. Maggie, he wants to bless you that you then will become a blessing to other people. And God gives to us that we might share it. Hallelujah. We share the bounty. I believe something good is coming to the church. I think we've been, yeah, we've, we've, been, we've been under the course for just a little bit longer than we would care to think. But I believe we're coming to a period just now. God's been dealing with his church. He's been sifting his church. I'm believing there's going to be a presence of God coming upon his church. Hallelujah for those who have been standing, waiting for him, standing in the gap, Bob, standing firm in the, in, in, in the walls. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So tonight we're going to finish in prayer. I'm not going to be exhaustive tonight, but I can just maybe ask us, just if you your fine sit, seated where you are or wherever we are, but just as we take these moments now, as we finish this service, if there's something that's been screaming out at you in this morning ministry, some of you obviously are just here tonight, but glory to God, I've, I've created the scene, and you just know deep within you that you can just get before God and you can say, Father, restore to me. Restore to me that which was lost. Hallelujah. Lord, restore to me. Lord, whatever it might be, glory to God. Let's just cry out to God just now. We're going to just take a few minutes. We're just going to leave ourselves before the Lord. Hallelujah. And now we're just going to reach out to him and receive what he wants to give us. Glory to God. We say, oh God. Listen, I'm going to finish with this verse and then I'm going to say this. It says, the devil, the enemy has come to steal, kill, steal and destroy but I have come to give you life and give you abundantly. Abundantly. I have come to give life and give it to you abundantly. Hallelujah. The enemy comes to rob and God comes to bless. Glory to God. And I feel as if there's a blessing in here tonight and it's up to you to take hold of that and whatever it might be. So let's just spend these moments in the Lord. If you want to stand, if you lift your hands, you can do it. you like, you want to kneel by your face, whatever. But there's something just within you, you just know that you know that you know. Then let's just reach out to him and just and, and ask God to restore. Ask God to bless him upon your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If anybody wants to come out here for prayer and you feel you just want to come out for some prayer, that you can come out for some prayer as well. Hallelujah.